killed everyone on the roster. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. What is up, guys? It's your boy Hercules, and we are back at it again. We are talking about CM Punk being a sour soy boy. Now, if you don't know who CM Punk is, he is a wrestler that in 2013, he was at the highest peak of his career. Then he had a fallout with uh, WWE. He left. They fired him on his uh, wedding day. And he went on to sign with the UFC and competed in two matches in two UFC bouts. Got the living shit beat out of him. And even guys that like Joe Rogan said, this dude cannot fight. He is untalented in a UFC MMA sport. So fast forward to 2021. I believe it was 2021 or 2020. He debuts in a new company for a wrestling company called AEW. And they went all out. They went all out for this guy. They gave this guy the Michael Jordan welcome back type of a celebration. Now, he said in a new interview that he sat down with a former MMA interviewer, uh, Ari something, his name is, I'm not really too sure what his real name is. Uh, but he sat down and he started talking about the whole situation with AEW. And there's some things he said that I would pretty much agree with him that um, the boss and AEW is too much of a friendly guy instead of a boss. But that's because that's how he is. That's who he is. If it, if he truly didn't want someone like that, he would he would have stayed in WWE and worked for the other guy which I'm pretty sure he didn't like either. And I'm pretty sure he doesn't like the other guy that is in charge in WWE right now. But I digress. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about, because I don't want to make this video too long. He said that he was trying that nobody in AEW wanted him there, which, again, is a bunch of BS from CM Punk. Anybody that sits down and listens to CM Punk and believes every fucking word that this guy says, you are a retarded person. Because this guy lies straight from his gap tooth that he has in his face. He said nobody wanted him in AEW. When they went all out for you, they gave you the biggest contract in your whole career, more than WWE was even willing to pay you because at that time, WWE didn't even want them. The Fox, Fox Network were the ones willing to pay the money to get him back. So just imagine that. Well, he gets to AEW. He has multiple surgeries because his body just can't stand it. He He's... He's damaged goods. That's pretty much what he is. And he has a reputation of trying to be someone that he is not. Well, it didn't work out in AEW. Now, he has some, he had a brawl uh, with some guys that were the EVPs in AEW. We really don't know what truly happened there, who started it. But I think what happened was, now he pretty much, didn't really talk about that, but I think the reason why there was even a brawl out there was because CM Punk is someone that likes to hear stories about him. He he sits there online and, and reads every article that talks about CM Punk, right? Or Phil Brooks, that's his real name. And I think it got to him when people were talking about rumors that he supposedly didn't want Coke Cabana and AEW that he was trying to force Tony Khan 
so he wouldn't put Colt Cabana there. Now, he says he never told Tony Khan anything, but we don't know. We truly don't know. I'm not going to take anything from CM Punk or Tony Khan because they both could be lying out of their ass, especially CM Punk. So we just got to go with what we think. And I think that CM Punk kept reading these articles and it got to a point where he got fed up and and I he had this little meltdown on uh, a AEW post uh, medium scrum. And it led to a brawl that he had with Matt Jackson, Kenny Omega, and Nick Jackson. Where supposedly the dog was hurt, chair was thrown, no punches was really thrown, but somebody got bent on the arm. I don't know what kind of fight that is, but it's most likely a typical wrestling fighter's fight, I guess. But fast forward, he comes back. He has a little, I guess, little drama with John Moxley because, I mean, I think John Moxley, Moxley, uh, Mosk, Moxley, God damn, I can't even say his word, his name, uh, Dean Ambrose. I'll just leave it like that. Uh, he didn't want to drop the title for, to CM Punk. And I didn't even think CM Punk needed the title at that time, but I understood why they were putting the title on him because, well, you're paying him big money and, well, you're trying to use him to garner more fans for the company, even though it, it wasn't anything big of a difference. Now, he had that little uh, rivalry drama with John Moxley. And fast forward, he has another incident with, um, what's his name? Jack Perry. And it led to another fallout at the AEW, uh, I believe it was uh, Wembley Stadium All-In or whatever. And he has this issue that they were supposedly picking him up from the airport, which as far as I know, as far as I know, not a lot of wrestlers got picked up from the airport. So either CM Punk was told that he was going to get picked up or... Or, this is just me saying it, this motherfucker wants somebody to always be there for him. He felt like he was the big hot shot and he felt like AEW better take good care of him. That's how it looks to me and that's pretty much how I see it. After that, he has a brawl out with Jack Perry because a couple months ago or weeks ago, Jack Perry wanted to do a certain spot where he bashes a window with a pipe, a real glass. Everyone in, in uh, AEW Collision production was telling him it's not a good idea because what if you get hurt from shattered glass or whatever, right? Well, he wasn't listening and supposedly he was cursing everyone out. And he pretty much said that there were a couple people an AEW that just want to go in, have a certain, uh, have a match, go home and not work for the next couple days, whatever. I don't know if that's true coming from CM Punk. I don't believe him at all because I'm pretty sure he's that type of person too, but Hey, whatever, right? I don't care. So they come up to him. They're asking him, uh, for uh, for advice. He's like, I don't want to get involved. They're like, well, we tried everything and we think you could get maybe through through uh, through Jack. Maybe you can convince Jack that it's a bad idea. He's like, oh, man, uh, I don't want to start drama because the way I'll go over there, it could start drama, blah, blah, blah. At the end, he goes over there talks to Jack Perry. Jack Perry understood. And I guess they never did this. They never did the spot. But then this is where I find it hilarious because he's like, if you want to do a certain spot like that, you're not going to do it on my show. You're going to do it on the other show, which right there to me feels like CM Punk 
thinks he's this big. He thinks he's Hulk Hogan. Like, dude, you're not even at that level. Like, you're, you got a character work that is phenomenal, but you aren't at that level. Yes, did the company, which was uh, Warner Brothers, made another show for you? Yes, because they were paying you a lot of money. They didn't want to go, go to waste. So they're going to try to use you as much as they could. But CM Punk comes off as this freaking egotistic maniac. And I'm not surprised because it's CM Punk, right? Damn, it's 10 minutes. God damn. Well, he says all that shit, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, the pay-per-view, Jack Perry uses a real glass, says the infamous words of real glass, go cry me a river. I guess CM Punk heard, didn't like what he heard, went up to, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Jack Perry, or I guess he went up, supposedly he went up to Tony Khan, told Tony Khan, like, hey, you should go handle this, which I find it very pussy energy from CM Punk, like, you got butt hurt because he said something like that, yet, you're the same dude that kept talking sh- trash to Triple H, kept talking trash about all these wrestlers after leaving a company you couldn't get over a fucking go cry me a river god damn man CM Punk has truly become a soy boy but okay let's get into the final coffin what ended CM Punk's reign now he he supposedly was always requesting his release because he felt nobody wanted him in AEW. Nobody wanted me, right? That's This is what CM Punk said. It's not me making it up. This is what CM Punk said, that nobody wanted him, so he wanted out. He wanted to be, be released from his contract. And Tony Khan was like, no, like, I got plans for you. I want to use you. I want you here in AEW, whether it's at Dynamite or this new show that they're forcing me to create just to have you there. And we're going to split the rosters. Now, this is why I 100% believe in CM Punk that Tony Khan doesn't know 100% how to run a wrestling show because not only did he made another show, but... He was supposedly going to split the roster, but then really never split the roster because he was still having people from the other show show up to this show, which made completely no sense. So I I 100 agree with that. And yes, Tony Khan is not a 100% boss. He's more of a nice guy. That is something that a lot of people want in their and they're boss, and you can't have both. You can't have a nice boss and a boss, boss type of boss, right? You can't have that. Either you get what you like, which is a nice boss, or you get a hardcore boss, which I always prefer the hardcore boss because business always comes first, and that's how you make your money. Now, after... The whole go cry me a river. CM Punk tells Tony Khan. Tony Khan supposedly coming from the mouth of CM Punk tells CM Punk, what am I supposed to do? Which to me is like Tony Khan telling him like, dude, what the fuck you want me to do? You're a fucking man. You handle your bullshit. You started this. You fucking finish it. And CM Punk being someone that knows They really, he can't be touched. He can't be touched, right? Decided to, you know what? Hmm. Let me go try and threaten this young kid. Use my power against this kid. And that's what he does. He says he never threw a punch, which I don't know if that's true. I don't believe him at all. I don't believe nothing of CM Punk. Says he never threw a punch. He just choked someone. But then he throws the funniest fucking shit ever. He says, I knew I can beat him. He knows I can beat him. Dude, you you couldn't even beat a freaking USC mat. 
You couldn't even beat one of those uh, standing UFC uh, mannequins so you can train. You couldn't even beat that, dude. Come on. Come on, CM Punk. We all know how bad you suck at freaking MMA, okay? Don't try to act like this tough guy because you're not, dude. You are not a tough guy, okay? So after that, CM Punk has another meltdown where he's crying like a little bitch, threatening that he's not going to go out there and wrestle. He is basically saying, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home, which is the bitches move you can ever do as a professional wrestler. This is not coming from me. This is coming from other wrestlers. When it came to Stone Cold and Stone Cold decided to take his ball and leave, guess what happened? A lot of those wrestlers were talking shit about CM Punk, even the boss Vince McMahon. Now, I'll give CM Punk some credit because he took his little small balls that he has and actually went out there and did the work. And the rest is history. After that, he gets fired. Uh, Jack Perry base, basically takes uh, a bunch of the, the flames. And CM Punk goes back to WWE, which he said he would never go back. But as you know, this is CM Punk. He's the biggest liar in the whole world. So what do I come out away from uh, this whole interview? What I come out from this interview is you can't believe CM Punk at all. This is probably the phoniest person you will ever meet, the craziest person you will ever meet, the biggest delusional, egotistic person you will ever meet. But goddamn, he is a good wrestler when it comes to mic work and telling a story. Uh, I'm not surprised that he still has some sourness towards AEW, and I'm pretty sure AEW has some sourness, but I also find it hilarious that he wants to sit there and say he's a changed man, yet he still acts 100% the same. Um, I also find it hilarious that he keeps saying that AEW wanted to ruin his reputation when, dude, your reputation has always been a fucking asshole. Go back in history. If you really believe CM Punk was always looked at as this fucking angel, you are crazy, okay? At the end of the day, whether you believe CM Punk 100%, whether you believe AEW, Tony Khan, or whoever out there, the journalists, the media, whoever you believe in, none of them are telling you 100% the truth. None of them. Some might tell you 50%. Some might tell you 20%. Some might tell you 80%, 90%, 99%. But not one single person or journalist is going to tell you 100% the truth. At the end of the day, CM Punk, man up, move on, go back to WWE, try to get, try to get healthy if you can, because God, go, Lord knows... That body, man, seems like it can't handle the, the struggle of being a professional wrestler anymore. And AEW, Tony Khan, start learning how to become less of a nice guy and more of a boss. And uh, yeah, I think either way, both places are better off because AEW is better off without CM Punk and CM Punk is better off without AEW. But let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. I just leveled up, I thank God. Scrape from the mud, now it's time to get the pie. Sweat, hit them blood.